Hey family, welcome to another edition of Plant Dominant Dollars with Nina Fletcher. I am your host, Nina Fletcher, and I have some very happy, very munchy, very special guests here with me today. Um, you may notice that they sort of look like me. <laughs> this is my family. <laughs> I think you already, you've already met, I'm going to start over here with this one right here. You've already met my daughter, Jade. Hi, Jade. <laughs> um, this is, and right next to Jade is my niece, Elise. Hi, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> and right next to Lily is my nephew, Roland. <laughs> and last but not least, this is my youngest nephew, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so they have joined me today um, for a Plant Dominant Dollars edition. So I sort of had to mix some of the requests that I was getting and something that I knew was going to please them. And we came down with vegan cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. Um, I try not to use trademark names, but vegan cinnamon, right? So get this. I'm just going to tell you flat out. There is no redeeming and no nutritional property in this recipe at all. Period. Don't even look for it. I'm just trying to be honest with you. <laughs> the only redemptive quality that this particular recipe has is that it tastes good. Okay, so there you go. If you are the vegan that around, you know, the time we're supposed to be eating everything fat eating that's known to us anyway. If you're one of them vegans that's looking for something that's completely healthy, <clears throat> continue watching. You will learn something today. So, <laughs> vegan cinnamon rolls. So, our first helper is my nephew, Jordan. Uh, and we're also going to be making some uh, hot cocoa, some vegan hot cocoa. Because a lot of you don't know, the cocos that you buy have milk powder in them, like cow's milk powder in them. Um, so, those of us who are lactose, sometimes that's why we have reactions to them and we don't know why. So, you're using the name brand cocoa mix with the milk powder in it, but you're using almond milk. All right, so I figured to make this easy, I should show you in three sort of steps um, because it can get a little bit involved. So the first thing you want to do is to go ahead and activate your dry yeast. Now look, I'm showing you this. Now this is a very controversial ingredient because there are some vegans who don't have a problem with active dry yeast and then there are some vegans who do. So, uh, because it's a living thing. We here at Plant Dominant Dollars, we cook for everybody. So the alternative for those of you who do not use active dry yeast, you're gonna use about four tablespoons of um, double acting baking powder, not soda, powder. Baking soda is different. So you want to use four tablespoons of baking powder and then everything else is basically the same. But for those of us who don't have a problem with active dry yeast, you put two teaspoons, teaspoons, the little ones, teaspoons of active dry yeast in a small bowl and about a cup of warm plant milk. It can be a nut milk, it can be coconut milk, it could be anything. So I'm going to ask my nephew, see what it looks like after it proves? You're going to wait for it to prove a little bit, okay? So I'm going to ask my nephew to go ahead. You can pour all of that in. Okay. Just plop it right on in. There you go. That's what active dry yeast. You're going to put that in there. Make sure you get all the good stuff. All right, so now that we have added our dry yeast and everything, you don't want to beat it up too bad because it still has to have that rising action. We're going to have my daughter come in. Come on in, G. And we're going to have you stir 
the active dry yeast and I have I poured this into some cream sugar all right so this is now this is another controversial uh, ingredient you can use coconut oil if you want to I am using earth balance it is a organic uh, vegan spread that is made out of vegetable oils a variety of vegetables um, you can use coconut oil if you want to I use this because I like it better in this recipe okay so I'm gonna have Jordan go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of flour and here let me show you how oh. see how that go just like that yeah, and Jade's gonna keep stirring so you just a little bit by a little bit by a little bit just keep adding in the flour just a bit. <laughs> it looks like oatmeal See, <laughs> it looks a little messy but then it's going to start getting a little bit thicker a little bit thicker and what you want to do is make okay you can stop with the flour jay go ahead on and mix that in and if you, you get a look at it, you want to make sure that you get the flour incorporated in each. If you notice that it's too much flour, it's climbing the walls, you want to stop with the flour a little bit and just keep adding, uh, you know, and, and keep mixing until it all sort of comes together. Okay, now you can start adding some more flour. Awesome. Awesome. Keep going. Now, when you do, that's okay. <laughs> this is something that you can also do in an electric mixer, but I have kids. So, <laughs> why use a mixer? These when you are have why kids? I use a mixer. There you go, Lee. Why use a See? mixer when you can have kids? Why use a mixer when you just have family to help you out? All right, so let's hold off on the flour. If you look, you can notice where it's getting like a little bit. Let me hold that up. You can notice where it's getting a little bit stiff. See that? And it's starting to come together. Now that is when you really start sort of folding and pressing in and making sure that all of that flour gets into the mix. Now, uh, thank you very much to both of you. You may go and sit down. Thank you very much. You did a good job. Lily, come on in, sister. It is your turn to help. Let's get it. No, you're still here. Wait, 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 why are you still here? You're going to be needing for about eight minutes. You want you want the whole eight minutes? Sure. <laughs> so here you go. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure we get the rest of the flour working in there. This one takes a little bit of elbow grease. It looks dry, but it really is not. And uh, just to let you guys know, that is about three cups of all-purpose flour. So, so far you have the creamed um, earth balance with the, I use organic cane. <clears throat> so, um, you have that creamed and then we've added active dry yeast, which is the dry yeast with the warm plant milk. And I used almond milk. So. <clears throat> All right. So, believe it or not, that is what your dough is going to look like before you start kneading it. Okay, it looks dry, but it's gonna come together. Now, this thing right here is a team effort because in all actuality, you need for about eight minutes. So you make sure you get all that dryness, everything that looks dry looks like it's not together, it's gonna come together. There we go. Can you put that on there? And I'm just going to do a quick kneading lesson. Now, people knead differently, okay? This is how I do. What you want to do is sort of pick it up from the bottom, push it with the heels of your um, hands. See how that works? So you pick it up from the bottom, push with the, knee, the, the heels of your hands. And you just keep sort of like, you flip it a little bit. See how that's going? And it's a nice soft dough. You want to make sure you get everything in there. Okay. So, Jade, you were in here and you did uh, a little bit of stirring, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to let Lily have the first knead. And then I'm going to let you have. So, you saw how I was doing that? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, you push. 
pull, push. See how that go? All right, so there you go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need that, and believe it or not, you are literally needing for about eight minutes. That's why, you know, if you have an electric mixer, that's all good, you know, I don't use them. I literally sit here and need for the whole eight minutes while I'm listening to some music. You know what I mean? So, or you can always get the relatives involved. <laughs> Hi folks. Hi mom. <laughs> <laughs> so here, when you're looking at your dough, it could get just like a little bit, I want to say oily, but it's not necessarily oily. You want to make sure it doesn't get too overworked and oily, and you want to make sure it doesn't get too dry either. So you sprinkle a little bit of flour on your surface. Excellent job. You just keep the kneading going. Keep the kneading going. Awesome. It's like a what? <laughs> Imagine rubbing a child on that and baking it. Just imagine. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> All right. So, are you tired yet or are you still going? Jake can go. Oh, she's ready to drink. Okay. So, let's sprinkle some flour down. We're going to let Jake go a little bit. You see how to do it, Jake? Mm hmm. Go ahead and proceed to knead. I'm going to rinse my hands. Hmm? And towel. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Excellent job, Lily. Really. Skill. That's what's up. Awesome. I think probably my favorite part of this whole thing is the kneading. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> this is the fun part because you, it, it's, I don't know, it's just relaxing to me. Delicious. So yeah. it doesn't bother me to do it for like eight minutes and just keep going. Yeah, it's like Play-Doh. It's really fun. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, because see, my, my daughter and her friends have gotten into this thing of making slime. Wow. Oh. I don't really So this is right over really the alley. Much. I'm saying, she's making this slime. I put my hands... <laughs> This stuff is like, but at least when I put my hands in this, I know I can eat it later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't make it as much as I used to. That's true, too. Hey, do you use detergent in Elmer's thing? It's, yeah. yeah, that whole, yes, nothing edible in it, no redemptive quality, except for that it's fun. Edible Wait, sign is a real thing. Isn't it, isn't hmm? there a food coloring in it? That's edible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And there are actual <laughs> recipes cool? for edible slime, so... Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh. Mm -hmm. He didn't get an edible slime. Oh no. <laughs> There's nothing, <laughs> nothing vegan about slime. I mean, how could it be edible? I'm going to throw some of this in there. You just try to keep the dough not necessarily dry and not necessarily oily either. Need the child. Dough. All right, I'm going to hit some. I'm going to hit a little kneading here child. myself, if you don't mind. Excellent job, Jay. Excellent yeah. job. I have very little to do. My nephew's going to come join me for a bit. Which come one? on over, Roland. <laughs> We're getting towards the end of the need, and Roland is going to show us um, how to pretty much close it off. So give me a little bit of a need there. Push with the heels. There you go. That's it. Something anybody can do. I'm going to throw a little bit of our flower down because I think it needs a little bit more. Okay. My watch. No. <laughs> you got the watch. It's waterproof. This is a disaster. You <laughs> got it all in your hands. Watch. Stop the taping. Not the watch. It's on my watch. <laughs> 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 well, you'll need to wash your hands. I don't wash my hands. I still got a little bit of flour. <laughs> well, I do. All right. Yeah, well, guess what? You didn't do as much. Awesome. So we're going to come to the end of the kneading process, and Roland's going to show us how to finish off a knead. There you go. You push the points in. You do it again. Yep. So you see how it's all pointy and everything's like in, it looks like a, a hoagie roll? Yeah. Right? Nope. You're going to close them ends in. There you go. Close them in. 
And then you got to get it into a ball and roll it. Roll it. There you go. Rolling. That's why his name's Rolling. Yeah, he goes. Roll on land. This is my roll. calling. <laughs> roll on land. And after you get it, show him that ball. Get, yep, there it is. It's in a nice ball. You mm. pop it into an oil. <laughs> you pop it into an oil bowl. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I just used a little bit of olive oil. And that works really good for me. But you can use a grapeseed or any other kind of oil. Because what happens is if you put this thing, if you put this ball of, of dough in a bowl that's not oiled, when it climbs the bowl, you're going to have a problem punching it down and getting it out. You see what I'm saying? So what you want to do is you want to make sure you put um, the uh, oil inside the bowl. Now, I'm putting plastic wrap over the bowl right to assist in the rise now here's the trick with the rise I tried this one a little bit earlier and I'm gonna tell you now get to a spot in your kitchen where you can rest because if you simply open the door I figured out what happened with my first rise I was trying to do a counter rise which means you would just leave it like this and put it on a counter if your house is warm enough for it, right? But the reason the first one I did didn't work was because I opened the door. And it's winter outside. So as soon as that cold air came in, it killed my rise. You see what I'm saying? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're either in a place where you're not going out, you're not opening the door, and the warmth in the house is going to stay consistent, or you're going to do what I'm about to do right now which is to take your bowl, plastic wrap and all, right? I'm telling you, this is not a hot oven. It is a warm oven. I had it on 170 and then I'm turning it off and you leave the door open for about two minutes. And then what you're gonna do is put it in. Not hot enough to melt the plastic, but just hot enough to get an active rise. So I'll be right back. I'm going to stick this in the oven, a warm off oven, okay? All right, so now we're trying to get a mild rise on the rolls. Um, generally, you want to leave that in there anywhere from between a half an hour to an hour. The longer you leave it, the fluffier they are, okay? And that's only the first rise. So the first rise, stick it in the warm oven or in a warm spot uh, for about a half hour to an hour. Okay, so while that's coming up rising, we're going to work on, remember I was talking a little bit earlier about the hot chocolate? All right, so here's the problem. You go to the store, you want some hot cocoa. And you see all the famous brands, right? They have milk powder in it. That's why those of you who are lactose intolerant and other things have a problem with um, pre-made hot chocolate. So how do you get around it? It's called organic cacao powder. And as you can see, it's already open, so you know I make this a lot. <laughs> so you take a look at that for a minute. And while we're doing that, I'm going to put in some almond milk. Just into a pot, and I need to bring that up. It doesn't need to boil, but it needs to be warm. Okay. And this is just all kinds of simple, easy, okay? What you want to do, take the cacao powder and equal the amount that you would use of regular cocoa, use that, okay? So some people use about two tablespoons. I use about two tablespoons, okay? Um, the second thing you want to do 
Again, I do not use hard sugar in my hot chocolate. I prefer not to. This is grade B maple or grade A dark amber maple. Put about a tablespoon of that in. So you're about two to one right now. Two, uh, two um, cacao powder to one maple. You're gonna mix that together a little bit. And if it mixes properly, you'll have, it's almost like a little bit of a paste. I'll show you in a minute. why I put liquid sugar in in a minute. All right. Somebody put their finger on there, taste that, tell me what it tastes like. Delicious. It does <laughs> not taste delicious. You yeah, sit up here lying. <laughs> You're supposed to be telling the truth up in here. Oh, uh, man. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Tastes good. It tastes like unsweet chocolate. It tastes bitter a little bit. Bitter, unsweetened chocolate. Delicious. What I like I'm it. saying. <laughs> I still like it. It's no, actually, it. like I said, it's very bitter. It is, it is everything chocolate is without the sweetness. So that's why it's important that you mix it with the gravy maple or the dark amber apple. Okay? So at this point, we are just waiting for um, everything to come up. Let me show you a couple variations here. I love to put a little pure vanilla into the mix. It works very well. A capful? If, hmm? capful? Maybe like a capful, just a touch. That's just me. It's not a whole tablespoon. It's not a, it's just a taste. Mm -hmm. You know what? It balances it out a little bit. And in some cases, I like to use almond extract. That is a matter of taste. Um, if I'm putting Kahlua in there, I don't use almond extract. We won't be using Kahlua today. I'm cooking for minors. So, <laughs> we are going to revisit our hot chocolate paste. Once are up, oh, actually, I love it. Things happen the way they're supposed to. Would you believe for the first time the milk is warm when it's supposed to be warm? Mm. How about that? So, let me show you what it's supposed to look like. Just when the wisps come off of it. You don't want it boiled because you're going to bruise it. Okay, you'll bruise the milk. So. If you would, wouldn't just want to stir the piece of sweet and do nothing. <laughs> Actually, Jordan is going to have, now, now watch this. This is what I absolutely love. I mean, you get that slight foam. Look at the top. Wow. Mm. You get that foam on the top that you like, right? You get it in everything with that. It's just like the best thing ever. And it's extremely sweet and chocolatey. And while that is cooling off just a little bit, because I don't like to serve up hot, hot chocolate, I'm going to move on to glaze a little bit. Because believe it or not, you can drizzle the glaze in here a little bit if you want to. But I prefer to put the glaze over the muffins. So I'll explain. We're almost to this point. Remember, we have our dough in the in the uh, oven. So we're almost to this point where I can explain where this is. But hold on, I'll be right back. So what this is is our bowl has been in the freezer for a little bit. We've got our beaters, and we are about to make just a little bit of cream to put over the top. Is there anything in there? No, there's nothing in there yet. 
it's all cold, right? So, this is coconut milk. You can get the unsweetened if you want. The It's important that you get the one with the guar gum in it. I don't know if you can zoom in on that or not, but it says guar gum. Guar gum is the part of the ingredient that makes it do this. Ooh. See how solid that is? Mm -hmm. You want the fat, right? It's important. So, all right, so now I'm gonna have Jade come into the frame here. And what I've done is I have added some coconut fat and a little bit of vanilla. And this is a glaze. So I prefer, can you grab me a key lime out the refrigerator, please? Mm -hmm. I prefer to use just a little bit of confectioner sugar with a little bit of vanilla. All right, I have a part of a key lime from when I did this earlier. So I'm actually gonna use a fourth of it. Just put it in there. That takes the place of salt in some ways as if at this point we're trying to be healthy so here we go I like to mix it together a little bit into a whipped cream consistency. But this actually is going to be one of the glazes that we put over our muffins. So let me, I'm actually gonna make a little bit more. And I'm gonna pierce it and put a little bit of it in. Oh, that that is, okay, that so remember I was explaining about guargon? Guargon oh, is the ingredient that makes, guargon is the ingredient that makes it fat, right? Up at the top. So you use the fat at the top, right? And then once you break through the fat, the actual coconut milk is there. The liquid and the solid. Exactly, and that's, that's exactly what you want. You need that, but you also need it to be sweet. Now, if I was not serving minors, we all know what I put in it. This is some serving minors. Well, I'd like to make Well, oh, well, I do have one. Me. No. Not <laughs> 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 me. Mm -mm. They be coming back. They be coming after me, y'all. All right, so let me taste. Absolutely. <laughs> that is absolutely... Correct, hoorah, and better than yes. Better than yes. Better than yes. All right, oh, so, no. you're good. What, you want to taste? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, move over, Jake. You got to get your drinks. No. Y'all want to taste it when you get on the thing? Yes, for your It is, that's it. Jake, okay, please. so. Oh, one more thing. What? Will you put it on like half so I can have one? Oh, you want a clean? Yeah, I want right. a clean. I will take I will take requests. Alright, so after you're finished making your glaze, you'll go ahead and sit it in the refrigerator. It wasn't the glaze. It wasn't <laughs> the glaze, thank God. Alright. So now let's get back with um the last part of the process for our rolls here. We got a little bit of a rise on it. All right, so now that we've gotten a rise on our dough, we'll put that in the back and you want to roll it out. So, Mm -hmm. 
I'm telling you, go with play dominance. They love to get in here. That looks like a heart. Yeah, it does. Well, what we're actually going for is sort of like a rectangular consistency, but I'm going to go with this. Rectangular consistency. Yeah, you're, you, you go for something rectangular, but this looks like, I mean, it's art. That's, I'm going <laughs> with the art part. I'm loving this because... I don't wait. know, maybe it turned out that way because there's a lot of love in the room. Yeah. Well, wait, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Our heart shaped uh, well, though. Like, I'm feeling I'm that. So I'm, I'm actually feeling that. So well, you like uh, put some, freaking some stuff on it? Yeah. Like we are gonna do some, um, some cinnamon and some cream. Some cream. Yeah. Some cream. Yeah. Some cream. Yeah. We're gonna do some um, cinnamon. Oh. We're gonna do some brown sugar. But before that, we're gonna take a little bit of our balance. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Give me five. High five. <laughs> um, and what you do is you sort of spread it on so that the uh, cinnamon and everything sticks. Yeah, I'm painting a heart here. How about that? Mm -hmm. Imagine just trying to like paint something on the um, on your food and put a happy face. Yeah, something like that. But like really, really, really good. Like something on the museum. As you can see, we have a very art minded family. This is just where we this is where we live. We make the world go round. Right? Yes. 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 Artists, that's right. This is our art. We make the world go round. Exactly. All right. Um, would it be any different if you use melted butter, like corn or thing? You can use melted butter, but here's the thing. Temperature is very, very important, so you don't want to break the dough. So if the, if the, um, I'm sorry, if the measurement is a little bit too hot with the melted butter, you're going to have a problem. You yeah. know what I mean? When you try to roll it, because yeah. the dough is going to break. So you use soft as opposed to melted. Good question. So what I did was I added about three tablespoons of cinnamon. And what I'm going to do is ask Jade, and after I mix it with my fingers, I'm going to ask Jade to just lightly, see how you go on and just sprinkle it on. Ooh. That's brown sugar mm. and cinnamon. I told you, this recipe, I'm just going to let y'all know, absolutely no redemptive uh, uh, nutritional value whatsoever in this recipe, I'm telling you. Other than the fact that it's fun and it's good and you can do it with family. And it is vegan. Okay, so you can go ahead and start sprinkling. And make sure you get, you know, close to the edges and everything. Get all the spots. Yeah, try to get as many spots as you can. Don't forget the outlines. I'll try to crush them. You want to spread it? Hmm? You got to spread it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. spread you spread it a little bit? What is that? Like but like break the dough? Not necessarily, because you just do it very lightly instead of like maybe rubbing it like sandpaper. Mm. Do it very, very lightly. And just try to get it, believe it or not, thick but even. Mm. That is freaking awesome. Mm -mm, that'll be fine because they'll melt. In there, you try not to get it too clumpy, but it is what it is. Sometimes that's what makes it pleasant when you eat them. <laughs> All right, so it's at this point that you just take it, and this is just me. Whatever is left over on my brush, I just sort of brush it every once in a while on the roll so that the cinnamon adheres. Just to get what's left over off. It smells really good. It smells awesome. Smoothing. All right, so we have our roll. And what we do, fast forward, if you could move these over to the other side for me. So in the bowl? Yes. All right. 
What you do is you do it in about inch and a half pieces, better to get better yet, maybe two inches. I'd say that's almost about two inches. Is the dough edible? Yeah, actually it is because you it's it's there's no animal products in it. Okay. So you don't have to worry about eggs. Won't get sick if you eat active dry yeast? Ah, not necessarily. But will it be the greatest tasting thing? No. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, it, it is edible. You will not risk salmonella or anything like that. It tastes terrible. But it's not the greatest tasting thing. Um, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> so, it's at this point. Now, I'm going to do this and this. And there's a reason. Okay? When I made my non-vegan versions, I'm talking about the full fat. Look, I'll tell you. I did it in a cast iron pan. And they were the bomb. In fact, I think I might go back and start doing that. But what you do is you just sit them upright. And believe it or not, this is where your second rise comes in. They're actually going to double in size. So when you're done with everything, all this is going to clump together. Mm. So what you're going to do, you go off for that second rise, and again, you're going to stick it into that warm oven. Somebody here said that I should say preheated, but turn it off. <coughs> Make sure you turn it off. We're not cooking it. You just need for the environment to be warm. That's it. Warm and covered. Okay? So, so go ahead, stuff it in for a half hour to an hour. All right, so now we have our glaze out of the refrigerator. Now, I would suggest that after you put the glaze on, you maybe pop it back into the oven, but we all know that's not gonna happen. So, glaze on uh, top. Could you leave two? I will leave a couple for the requesting party. Mm. They would like to have a plain roll, and that's fine. So what I normally do is I just sort of smooth it on. Right. So it's ready for hot chocolate and cinnamon rolls. The oldest one. The oldest one first. The second, hey, first. the second oldest. The, the second oldest. Okay, so I guess I'm going to have to go for my <laughs> the right fourth to my oldest. Left the youngest. with this because I have... Hungry folks. All right, so hand me your plate, Lily. Now, which roll would you like? Would you like a plain? I want the fattest one. Here's the fattest oh. one. <laughs> Getting greedy, aren't I? Let me take it. Yeah, well, I'm going to have one glaze and one not glaze. You can't, you have no right to Excuse me, this is America. <laughs> oh. My country. This is not oh. politics. Or this ain't politics. And if it was, you would faint. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Plant Dominant Dollars with <laughs> Nina Fletcher. We hope that you enjoy spending time with family as much as we do. Be safe, be happy, eat a lot. And we will see you next time. All right, y'all. One, two, three. Mmm. Oh, man. Yeah, Lord. Oh, mm. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. Mmm. That is good. Amazing. Yes. Mm. You've got to try it. I want a second one already. Mmm. How's the hot chocolate, y'all? Mmm. Y'all turn right. around and give it up. Give it up, up and up. You guys want to do it? Choose two. All right, hot chocolate. All One, three. two, three. Ooh, oh, that's good. That's amazing. Really chocolatey. Oh.
That's not nice too foam. cold, not too hot. Perfect. All right. It's got the nice foam on it and everything. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, God. Thanks <laughs> for joining us. Oh, yes. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Y'all wave bye. See you later. Bye. Eat this. Eat this. Eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Plant Dominant Dollars with Nina Fletcher. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tune in next week when Nina takes on Is my chickpea chili? Here on Plant Dominant Dollars with Nina Fletcher.